Yeah. Hey folks, Mike Skinner here, and I think this is the fourth video in the series that I've been working on creating. And today, I'm going to talk about the phrase that uh, many trauma and abuse survivors have heard over and over again is, just get over it, it's in the past, it's behind you, move on. And yes, that is true, it is in the past. But what I'm going to be sharing today is to uh, highlight how it's not so easy to just get over it. There's reasons why we can't, and why it, because it's stored in our body, the trauma. And that's what I'm going to speak to. I'd like to open up with a quote from uh, Anton St. Martin. Healing is never complete until we have been truly he heard. May the universe send you someone who will sincerely care to listen. And that is so true. The validation of being heard, getting to share your narrative, your story is important. So for those of you first joining, I am a musician, I'm a writer, I'm an advocate, an educator on the concerns of trauma, abuse, and mental health. I'm not a therapist and I'm not a doctor. But what I do share is hope, healing, and help. And I do that through my lived experience, what I've learned from other trauma survivors and also the practitioners that are out there that are helping us to heal. I truly believe there is hope, there is healing, and help. So one of my things is, when I do these things, is to also share resources. So that will be shared in the text section of the uh, video. So one thing I have learned that how trauma is stored in the mind, the body, and the psyche. And there was a period of time in my life where I was fortunate to uh, do performance presentations pretty much all around the country. And I was hired to speak to, and I would sing, <laughs> addressing my healing journey, uh, struggling with depression, which at one point was a major depression, uh, PTSD, which I yeah, now they call it complex PTSD, um, but just the things I had done to uh, help myself heal from that. And it's, it's an ongoing journey. It's a, it, for me, I, I've come to believe it's a lifetime of healing. But there is hope. We do get better. Um, one thing that I would ask, no matter what the audience, whether I was speaking to an organization that hired me to speak to about depression, the mental health piece, or trauma survivors or both, and it could be child abuse survivors, it could be a conference on um, for those who've been sexually abused as uh, children. But I would simply ask the question, how many have heard the phrase, just get over it? And I can guarantee you, the majority of the audience would be raising their hands. So that said something to me that I was not alone in hearing that. Um, and that's how this song came about. It's called Sorrow. Originally, I wanted to call it A Man of Constant Sorrow, but I found out there's several other songs with the same title, so I just shortened it and called it Sorrow. It's off my pirate CD. And uh, it was my way of addressing that language that one was hearing a lot to just get over it. It's in the past. Move on. It's behind you. Because um, those were hurtful. Those were hurtful statements. Uh, that had an impact. Uh, I was trying to heal. I did want to get over it. No one wanted to get over it any no more than me. So here's sorrow. Is it 
down Silly hold up his chin Not to commiserate in misery But to find some inner peace And yet despite all of this Still he holds up his chin Yet despite all of this Still he holds up his chin You take what a man holds dear Take it away Long sting to delete it Take it long Then you might find, then you might see the answer the question with the again. Dreams and hopes from yesterday, you never see them again. Then you might find, then you might see the answer the question with the again. Dreams and hopes from yesterday. Are they just dust in the waking? People say, think happy thoughts, this will all just go away. People say, sing happy songs, this will all just go away. Let me take from you all that you hold dear, and I want to hear you sing. I want to hear you sing loud and clear. So that is Sorrow. If you like the tune, um, write to me at MikeSkinner at Comcast.net and I'll send you the recorded MP3 of that from the, from the studio, the uh, CD version. And I had the good fortune to have my friend Christian Laurent bass guitar adding to it, so that just adds a whole new dimension of sound and layers. And along with uh, my friend Kelly McCann, who she is just an incredible singer, and she also added a whole new uh, level of dynamics to the song. So that is sorrow. So again, what I've learned is how trauma creates tension. For myself, it's stored in up here, my lower back. I dealt with a lot of physical abuse, sexual abuse as a child, so uh, I don't want to get into graphic things, but uh, those things are still stored in me, so sometimes things just come over me, and I'm not even sure where it's coming from, and I just tense up. It can be a memory, it can be a thought, it can be an anniversary of something. Last week was my brother David's birthday. David was a year younger than me. Uh, David ended his life. So, um, his birthday, and I had all great plans to go out and work that day in the yard because I'd seen the weather forecast the day before. So there again, I want to get over these things, but this, this thought, this anniversary memory, this time clock, whatever's ticking inside of me just washed over me that day, and I got through it because now I'm mindful of it. I'm, I'm aware of what's happening, so I can do things, and I still went out in the yard and did things. I just did not have the same zip to myself but I was able to do what I needed to do but there was there was a deep sadness over me uh, 
I was grieving the loss of my brother because that is something I have stuffed aside. I, I've lost two brothers to suicide. So the holidays are a hard time for me because David ended his life on New Year's Day. My brother Danny's birthday, who also ended his life, is you know two days after Christmas. So that is how, for me, again, just my personal experience, how my trauma is stored in my body, those memories, those thoughts, those feelings, those anniversary dates, and I don't even have to be thinking about it. And now that I'm aware of it, I've always felt bad um, because the holidays could come up, and, and there was a time I was married, had young kids, and I looked forward to the holidays just like anyone else. Well, I can't say everyone looks forward to it, but I was I would look forward to it because you're celebrating with your children and your wife. I went great lengths to buy lots of gifts, but some Christmases, something would just come over me, and I would just be in this depressed, melancholy state, and I, it was so hard to, to try to come out of it. Now I'm aware. I wish I knew how the trauma had impacted me back then. Maybe my marriage would still be intact today. I don't know. So it's to just say, just get over it. Trust me, we want to. And I think this is true for a lot of trauma survivors. A lot of us, many are not aware until we become informed of the impact of trauma. So when I'm talking these things, again, I've read so many books I've attended webinars, seminars, conferences. Uh, I'm going to share a couple books. So these folks, these are the experts, and these are just a small sampling. But, you know, Bessel van der Kolk uh, book, The uh, Body Keeps a Score. So, and that is addressing how trauma is stored in the body. So if this is written by a doctor, I mean, that has years of experience in the trauma field, that lends credence there's something going on to that. that so that can help learning how it impacts, learning how to heal from it. Because that's, again, it's hope, healing, and help. These books, these resources can help us find pathways to healing. It doesn't have to be a life sentence. Another really great book is Childhood Disrupted. How Your Biography Becomes Your Biology and How You Can Heal. And that's from Donna Jackson Nakazawa. And again, I will share the links to these books in the uh, text section of the video. Again, I highly recommend them. I these books. I've read each of them a couple times. I was ready to say several times. I've read them twice each. Um, Scared Stick: The Role of Childhood Trauma in Adult Disease. And that's the other thing that I've learned is they have the studies, and one of them is the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and the CDC Centers for Disease Control, about adverse childhood experiences. How that leads to later in life, health issues, chronic health issues, big issues. It can lead to depression. It can lead to suicide, substance misuse, alcohol misuse. It can lead to heart disease. It can lead to cancer and diabetes. So there is something to that. So if someone is telling you to just get over it, uh, the fact that you can end up with major health issues later on in life because your immune system is being attacked constantly from the trauma we have gone through, that's that speaks volumes. So hopefully we can educate society, the public at large. We can educate ourselves. I've learned a lot and I'm still learning on this. Uh, I still have a long ways to go. I will share the ACE CDC study link as well. Please uh, take a look at that. And again, this is not doom and gloom. Learn about the things that, that I shouldn't be telling you what to do, but I have I have found Learning about these things has helped me to heal, and it's helped me to connect with people. So, and that's one of the things. Trauma disconnects us. So, learning about how these things disconnect us can help us to heal and reach out, and become part of the community. Finding a trauma-informed therapist, and but here's the key: a trauma-informed practicing therapist. There's a lot of folks that are trauma-informed. They're aware of these things but they're still treating us in the old medical model here. Here's a pill. Thank you. See you next week. It has to be trauma-informed practicing, and that is another whole arena itself. There's lots of great people out there. There's lots of articles. Again, I will share some of these things, but also it helps for us to uh, find this ourselves, to do that research, because you're worth it. You deserve it. We all deserve to heal.
Uh, one of the best things for myself was when I drove from Manchester, New Hampshire, down to the trauma center in Boston, and that just did a world of good for my healing. Um, Maya Angelou says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. And I agree. So that's why when I share, I encourage others to share their story when it's safe, when it's appropriate, and where you feel comfortable. It's also unmindful you don't have to share, but maybe with someone that you trust. I'm also mindful that there's cultural differences that can keep you from sharing. But when we keep this stuff bottled up inside of us, it makes us sick. So as I like to say a lot, go to where the silence is and say something. And I think that's from Amy Goodwin. I did not make that up. So as Alex L. says, and I'll have to read it because I'll forget it, you're not a victim for sharing your story. You are a survivor, setting the world on fire with your truth. And you never know who needs your light, your warmth, and raging courage. And that is so true. So be that light, that raging courage for someone else. And be that for yourself. At the very least, just be it for yourself. Because our physical, our mental, and our spiritual health is important. We deserve to heal. We deserve to thrive. I was a victim of abuse. I was a victim of crimes. I survived, but I have learned to thrive. I do have peace. I do have joy. I have safety in my life, and that is huge for me in healing, and I still have a long ways to go. So healing, become engaged, if you can, in community peer support. That is one of the best things for us, helping us to heal, being around others that maybe they haven't walked in your shoes, but their empathy can take you a long way. Find creative different ways to heal, whether it's gardening, journaling, nature, Music, the creative arts, all of them. And please don't say you're not creative. We're all creative. If you want, want to learn an instrument, please do. If you want to pick up a paintbrush or a crayon or a pencil and draw something, please do. Again, I'll share some links on uh, the different forms of creativity. Because a lot of folks don't think they're creative, but we are. Do you like to cook? You know, you're creative if you're reading and writing. So there's a lot of things one of the things for the folks and even trauma survivors who say this to one another, just get over it. We need kindness. We need compassion. We need empathy. We need to feel welcomed in society. So please think about that and try your level best to do those things and uh, let us all heal together and and if we just heal one person at a time, making them become trauma-informed and trauma-practicing. And if you have medical providers and, that are not aware of the ACE study and how your childhood abuse, your trauma, your abuse, wherever it may have come from, because that's one thing I've learned. Trauma impacts all of us differently. This is not a competition. We're not here to compare. Your trauma is unique to you. And if your medical practitioners, your providers are not listening to you, Try your level best to educate them on the ACE study because, I mean, this was written by doctors. This is written from their peers. And you deserve it. You deserve the heal. And again, thank you. I'm not sure what I'll be speaking about next week, but we'll figure that out. Thanks again and take care. Bye-bye.